How's everybody doing? My name is Mark, also known as DJNSM. Go to DJNSM.com to find out more about me and uh, my wonderful, exciting happening life here in Brooklyn, New York. I'm here today to show you how to make a momentary contact style button using Ableton and a dummy clip and a hack involving the repeat launch. So this is really cool stuff. There's a lot of places you can go. I'm going to give you the quick overview on how to do this and you can take it further. There's more than one way to do this. The, one of the other ways is to use a noise gate, but it takes a lot more CPU and it's more complicated and I think that this is preferred. Now, for those of you who don't know what a momentary style button or a momentary contact button is, let me explain. Real quick, it is a button where it activates the event as long as you hold the button down and as soon as you release the button, the event stops. This is in contrast to the default note and button behavior in Ableton that is fundamentally flawed and broken where Ableton implements a latching schema. That means that when you press the button, it turns the event on. When you press the button again, it turns it off. So we do these workarounds so that you can just hit the button, do something, release it, and go. And I could talk for hours on this in controllerism. There's a really high level theory on it. And if you're interested, contact me directly. Otherwise, let's just jump into here and show you how to do it. First off, I'm going to drop a dummy clip in there. And a dummy clip is nothing more than a silent wave. I recommend just rendering out a short silent wave and just keeping it somewhere in your farm so that you can use it. We flip over to the uh, clip and sample side. We're going to turn on the launch and the envelope window because we will need to modify a couple of parameters in here. The first parameter is turning the launch mode to repeat and quantization to 1 32nd of a note. And that is really critical because we want the fastest resolution. And although this, although this isn't perfect, this is the fastest resolution possible using this hack. So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, just pull an effect out so that we can have something to apply it to. I'm going to use beat repeat and I'm dropping the beat repeat on that same track. First thing you want to do all the time is group your audio. Then we will right click the repeat and the on off and we will add, uh, assign both of those to macro one. So when macro one is on, it turns the repeat on as well as the uh, activates the device and then it turns it off. Next, we're gonna wanna modify that macro number one over here in the envelope area. The easiest way to pick up on the right envelope is to select the macro or the knob, virtualized knob you wanna work with and then flip over. I use shift tab for that shortcut, flip over to the other side and it will automatically put you on the correct parameter. Now you may notice that my envelope area's resolution is at 1 64th of a note. I'm going to zoom out using Command 2 on a Mac or Control 2 on a Windows machine and zoom out to 1 32nd of a note. This is really critical in this particular endeavor because these little gray lines here represent 1 32nd of a note interval. That we're using. So it'll make sense as I walk through this. The first thing you want to do is you, we want to modify this envelope here just after the first 30 second note. So here's the, where that first 30 second note ends and I just go a dab after that right there and I add a point and then we're going to add a second point and then we're going to drag that down to 0%. So what, ha what happens here is when we play this clip, the clip says, ah, we're going to turn this clip, this parameter value up to 100% and then as soon as we hit this first 30 second, we're going to turn it off. So when I play this clip, you will see this happen. See, there is playing. So you can see a little cursor going by. It's a little fast, but nonetheless, you can see it. So what it's doing is when the cursor is here, it's at this value, and then as it moves down, it turns it to this value, and we're done. So flipping over to the other side, we want to take this macro, and this is often the case. You want to take the macro and turn it all the way up. It kind of changes from state to state. I've, it, I've got some weird inconsistent behavior on this, but usually I just turn it up. So when we press this clip, you're going to see see how I'm just clicking that and it goes up. There's one problem we have and I'm going to leave it playing. It's looping. So every measure in this case, every bar comes back and it flips it back on. So the way that we deal with that is very simple. Turn off looping. And ideally, just for the sake of not confusing yourself, pull your end in really tight there. So what happens is as long as we press it, it's on and then it goes off. So we're going to flip over here and watch the same thing happen. On and releasing now. Pretty damn tight. Just to show you how cool this is, we're going to key map, command, key, command K or control K, 
clicking on that particular cell and I'm going to put the period on there, a little decimal. So when I hit the period button, it's going, 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 and it's off. And that's how you do a momentary contact. You're done. Um, a couple of notes before we just take it all the way and push it out a little further. One a really important note is that in working with these envelopes and uh, manipulating this style of data, there are some hacks and some inversions that you need to know how to do to not have it pop and hiss. Additionally, this particular method of dummy clipping, if it's not inverted, when you save your file or you save as a template and you open it, everything will be on. And there's a way to have it default off. And you have to invert flip every single variable. I'm not going to go into that unless people really start crying for it. But it's a need to know thing. It's just very heady and very complicated. And uh, I don't know if people are going to get this one in the first place. So um, I can take this all the way. This is stuff that uh, you're only going to uh, need if you are a true pro and looking to get out on stage. So real world usage. This particular pattern here worthless completely freaking worthless uh, unless you're using a uh, uh, send and return schema this is just dog meat you don't want to use it so in order to use this as an insert effect and use beat repeat how I use it and check out my videos to see some of the weirdness that I do this would be a relatively simple pattern okay we're gonna add one track in there I like to work left to right so I'm just gonna slide that to the left and you wanna have your IO window open all right and on the audio track, let's just get some audio in here real quick so we can keep track of this. I'll throw in a little Ill Gates track right here. Let's hear what it sounds like. There you go, Ill Gates track. And the first thing we want to do is we want to take the audio two and not send it to the master, but send it to the second audio track right here. And then we want to turn monitor in. So what's happening is this audio goes in this track, it hits audio to track two, and then it bounces up to this track, it plays through here, and then hits the master. So we can kind of see that in the signal flow when I hit play. There you go. I like to set this to no input. It's kind of a personal thing. Uh, do, do as you wish, but I consider that to be slightly more pro. So now we're going to actually use this clip and I'm just going to play Ill Gates uh, track here and hitting the period button. But let's make this slightly more dramatic, okay? Let's use the insert style, all right? And uh, I don't know, we'll just tweak that out a little bit. So let's play it again. There you go. That's how you use it. I hope all that makes sense. I will wrap the track up as you see it right now. I'll probably pop uh, Ilgate's track out, but I'm going to wrap it up exactly as you see it right now, and I'm going to post it on GitHub, and you can download it from there. So look for a link in the description. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. I hope this made sense. And remember, I am awesome. Thanks much. I'll talk to you soon, and bye.